technology. I use it all day, every day, non-stop, probably too much, but I'm so glad it's there. I remember when I was younger, my mum would always say, oh, you want to live in an instant world. That's what she used to say. Because back, back when, like I'm 40-ish, and um, you know, I'd, I used to say, you know what, if only I could just jump online to some special spot, type in what I'm looking for, and all of a sudden it just arrived on my doorstep. And people used to look at me and think, you've lost your mind. Like you, things don't happen instantly. You know, life's hard. It's, it's tough. And, and then, you know, you'd need to find out some information and you'd have to go into the library. Firstly, it takes you two and a half hours to find the book. And then you find the book and you're scrolling through. Three hours later, you find the page, you read through the information, you get the information and, and you've lost three days of your life. Whereas all I wanted was a world where I'd look for the information and it would appear. And it's almost like I think technology is a representation of what every human's perfect ideal is, all sending energy into what their wildest wishes are. And then there's a whole lot of smart people, a lot smarter than me, running around trying to create something that makes the world instant. That's all technology is. It's like the solution to the world's problems, um, helping people become more efficient and more lazy helping people have instant gratification rather than actually having to do anything. And, you know, I'm so glad it's here because there's nothing daily that I can't do a lot easier than it was done in the 80s or the 70s or the 50s or the 60s. Um, everything's just instant. It's exactly how I like it. Make a phone call, check an email, order something off the internet, shoes, clothes, anything. Um, the world's exactly how I like it. And it seems to be getting quicker and easier. So I think it's fantastic. It gives me more time, more time to relax, more time to be lazy. Um, I don't have to interact with people when I don't want to. I don't have to do anything. I can just hit buttons all day long. It's always this like conversation about how long do people spend on devices, you know? My kid's spending too much time on his device. Do you ever get off your phone? Blah, 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 blah. And, and I guess for me personally, I, I play with my phone a lot. I play with my phone even when I'm not meant to. Um, from the moment I wake up, I'm searching for the first inspirational YouTube clip that I can listen to as I go for a seven kilometer jog. You know, people say you spend too much time on your phone. I argue like back in the day, I had to order a tape off some midnight show, Tony Robbins, big cassette, stick it in my Walkman, put my big earphones on with 10 packs of batteries plugged into this thing just to go for a jog and get something inspirational into me. Whereas today, grab my phone, hit play. Um, so I'm straight into it, straight away in the morning. I think um, the general consensus in the world is we spend too much time on the smartphone. I'm permanently attached to mine. Back in the day, I don't know if you've ever seen that picture of what it used to look like, but our phone is more than just a phone. Our, our smart device is a mobile phone. Um, it's our computer um, way of sending in mail. It's our music. It's our CDs, our tapes, our videos. Our It's everything. So I mean, for us not to be on it would be strange to me. I think back in the day, you know, just because I'm sitting there reading a magazine, is that any different for me sitting on my phone looking up the news? So how long do I spend on my phone? I think it's permanently attached to me. It wakes me up. It's always with me. And, and I like it. I like my phone. I like, you can see, I like arguing the fact that technology is good. Like I don't like people that say it's shit. Technology has absolutely changed how we communicate with each other. Again, I'll always refer back to the 80s because that's what I know in the 90s. If I, if I wanted to play with Sam up the street, I didn't even know a Sam, but if I did, you know, I'd have to literally, I'd grab this big thing called a telephone. I'd have to find one in the house and that's if my parents weren't on it. I'd pick it up and I'd listen to see if there's anyone else in all these other phones that were in the house. And if there was no one there, I could ring Sam. And the chances are of Sam parents actually answering the phone were pretty, pretty, they're probably not that good. So I can't speak to Sam, which 
was disappointing because I was lonely and I wanted to play. But the thing is today, my daughters or my sons get on their smartphone, they send a text or, or a message to their friends and they instantly reply. Do you want to play? Yes, I do. Boom, see you in five minutes. Bang, done. So communications got quicker. Some people always argue, oh my God, it's changed how we communicate. We no longer get together. We no longer talk. I, I think if anything, we speak more. You know, I in COVID is a perfect example. Like we're locked down. We can't go out. If you take that back, you know, a hundred years back, we'd all be stuck in isolation, never to have human interaction unless... Well, we wouldn't. We wouldn't be able to talk to each other. Um, so we went into full isolation last year. We're not allowed to go out of our houses, but I was talking face to face to more friends and family than I've ever done in my life via Zoom, via the technology that we have around us. So um, I can phone someone, I can email someone, I can text someone, I can send a message on Messenger, WhatsApp. Like there's a million different ways I can communicate with people today. So compared to how it was in the past, it's just, if anything, it's amplified our ability to, to talk and communicate with whoever we want globally, not just locally, um, and made, made life just a breeze. So it's, um, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, I think um, because of how easy the smartphones made our lives, and the amount of stimulation it can give us and the variety of what its purpose is, you can quite easily spend 24 hours a day on your phone. And I'm guilty at sometimes of pretty much feeling like that's all I do, whether I'm working on it, researching on it, watching the news, watching a movie, um, trying to communicate with someone, just looking at it for the fun of it. Then there's social media. You know, you can spend the full day on it. I think what I've found though is you know, there's this general consensus that um, the whole world's, world's gone crazy and we spend too much time on our phones. Um, I genuinely would argue the fact that if we go back 50 years, you jump on the train and there'd be a guy next to you with a paper spread right across you. And he's got that in front of him for the next hour and a half. He'd jump off the train. He'd be still walking with it. He'd sit down at his desk at work. He'd open up a magazine then he'd need to do some research, so he's in a book. I don't think anything's really changed from that fact. I think, I think people always stared at stuff and did stuff. We just happen to have so many different things on our phone now that it appears we've, we're doing a lot and we're, we're just brainwashed by this device. You know? So, so I, there's this stigma about how much time you, you stay on your phone, and I think, I think it's right. I think it's kind of back to the 80s again, 90s, when we spend a lot of time on our computers or our Macs, you know, how do you limit it? Well, you, you go back to basics, you kind of, you, you get out, you put it down, you go for a run, you go for a walk, you get back to nature, you start doing things, you go to a park. But I think, I don't, I personally don't think that um, the world's changed that much from what it was. I think it just looks like, because we can do 20, 30 different things on one thing, it always looks like we're attached to that one thing. Whereas before, when you used to look around, you'd see people doing all kinds of things, mesmerized by a book, by a magazine, by a newspaper, on their telephone, on their computer, playing Sega Mega Drive or Nintendo. So when you grab all of that and you, you put it all together, it's we're kind of the same as it was. So how do you limit it? Same way you would have limited it in the 80s. You'd say to your kids or you'd say to yourself, you know what, I've probably been reading this book for eight hours. I should probably put it down. I've been reading the newspaper for three hours. I better put it down and do some work. Um, you know, I've been sitting in the library all day. I should probably go home. So I think it's just general common sense and healthy living is the thing that limits screen time. The only thing that I'd say is, you know, why are we limiting it? Why do we think it's that bad when, if I go back 10 years, I was doing the same thing, I just did it differently. I think, I think um, screen time and, you know, not to overdo it, I think, yeah, 100%, but that's like the same would go for, you know, some people work too hard. Some people 
sleep too much. Some people do all kinds of stuff compulsively. I think getting on, on your phone first thing in the morning um, and the last thing at night before you go to bed, I don't know where I've read it, but somewhere it's like, you shouldn't do it. And, and I think it's probably the case, but I still do it anyway. You know, like who doesn't want to kind of check their emails first thing in the morning or have a look at Instagram at like five o'clock in the morning or have a one last look at some random video that you accidentally ended up watching, which takes you into a rabbit hole at 11 o'clock at night and it's like 12 o'clock and you're like, I better go to bed. Um, so that's, that's what actually happens. What should happen? I'd say it's, if I reflect on it and think about it, it's probably the worst thing to do. I think any stimulus, whether it's a coffee, exercise, doing something crazy in the middle of the night or, or whatever it is. Um, I mean, you're never going to come home and just go to bed. I think, um, yeah, screen time is in that kind of stimulation category. It's probably like having a coffee. It probably does affect your sleep. Um, so yeah, you probably shouldn't do it, but, but smartphones are addictive. So are the things on them. So I think, you know, human nature is whilst we shouldn't do it, we do it. I wake up as much as I'd love to sit there, pray, sing Kumbaya. I end up levitating towards myself, my smartphone, snoozing the alarm potentially or stopping it. Next thing I know, I'm checking my emails, my text messages. Um, but yeah, all in all, it shouldn't be like that. But that's where it's at at the moment. And um, it's a good, good thing to think about. How do you limit it? Don't know. Um, Self-discipline. That's probably the, the thing. That's the only thing that limits anything. Um, good routines, good, good healthy habits. Getting up in the morning and going for a run. I do that, but I check my phone first. Um, going to bed you know, unwinding. I do that. Then I check my phone and I go to bed. So yeah, it's a good thing. And I I, I probably need to watch it. But I think the only thing that can change it is self-discipline. Is it good for you? Scientists will say no, you shouldn't check your phone before you go to bed. And it shouldn't be the first thing you do when you wake up.